Right, we're live. Hi guys, and welcome to the video. Um, I'm pleased to say, as you've probably seen from the title, I've got Margaret back with me. Uh, it's been a while since we've chatted. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on again. It's a pleasure. And as you will have also seen, those eagle-eyed of you in the title, we're going to talk about jewellery. Now, jewellery is a niche that I've never really explored until recently when I sold uh, a little tiny gold cross that I had sat in my wallet for literally years because I didn't want to list it. I didn't know how to list it. it. I just put it off, listed it, sold within a week for £50. And yeah, I was amazed at how fast it sold. But I still know virtually nothing about jewellery. I've been watching Margaret's channel for years now, and I know you love your jewellery. It's something you're passionate about. So I thought it would be perfect to get you on and teach me a bit about jewellery and hopefully help other people that are going to watch this. Absolutely, so that, I'm excited. <laughs> that, that was the idea for the video. For those, for those of you who don't know who Margaret is, do you want to do a quick introduction? Let us know about your channel and stuff. Sure, yeah. My name is Margaret, and my channel is Texas Gal Treasures. I do videos all about making and saving money. A lot of it has to do with making money, selling on eBay and Etsy, and I also do stuff about print-on-demand, like merch and things like that. So a lot of jewelry, a lot of merch, a lot of fun. Yeah. So a good place to start, I think, would be why why do you love jewelry so much? Is that something that came before reselling, or was jewelry something you got into once you started reselling? Well, I mean, I was always into jewelry before, not as much as I am now. I was like weirder things or things that were a bit more unusual that you didn't see everybody wearing. So I was always on the lookout for something that was a little bit different. And then um, it's kind of sad, but when my grandmother passed away, I got a lot of the jewelry that was, she, I mean, she kept everything. A lot of my great grandmother's costume jewelry, a lot of my grandmother's fine jewelry and costume jewelry. Um, so just exploring all of that and then seeing as I was exploring that, what all was out there and then just I mean just started looking at it before I know you know I didn't look at it when I was thrifting or garage selling too too much and then I started noticing like oh wow that's amber or that's turquoise and this person obviously doesn't know what they're selling or they wouldn't have this box of turquoise jewelry for five dollars you know so right. then I really started honing in on the jewelry so that's cool so you've really learned as you as you've gone through the reselling yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew some because of what my the kinds of jewelry my grandmother liked. And growing up, she always had really nice jewelry, and she traveled a lot, so she always brought jewelry and things back from her travels. So I got to know some of the stones, and then my mom was really into you know certain kinds like amber and lapis, and so it made it a lot easier for me to identify some of those nicer stones and nicer pieces from seeing what they had along yeah. the way. But then, yeah, after she passed away and I started looking more into the um, things that she had, I started branching out a bit more. Yeah, so for somebody, for a layman like me, let's say I, I decided I'm gonna start looking in those little pots full of all jumbled up necklaces and stuff, which I avoid right now, I'll be perfectly honest. I look at it and it just makes me feel ill. It's like, I'm not going in there, <laughs> that looks crazy. <laughs> Where would you start? Would you? pick out stuff that you think looks nice or would you start by trying to find things that you know are gold or silver? What What's a good place to start for a beginner? Or, you know what I mean? What tips could you give for somebody like me just thinking, okay, I'm gonna start looking for jewelry that might be saleable. Where do you begin? Well, definitely I look for things that are unusual because that's what I, before I started learning more and more about jewelry, that was what I looked for. You know, because you know, I'm a kid of the 80s, so. I was like Susie and the Banshees, and so I was looking for bats and snakes and you know things yeah. like that. So keeping in mind that there are people out there, that's, that's one of the tips that I have, that there's a collector for everything. So if you see a, a brooch or a ring or a bracelet that's got you know a donkey or a toucan or a cat or whatever, there's somebody out there that collects that, you know, so. Okay, cool, you know, so, th so if it's yeah like an ant there's a niche for every sort of animal i've certainly yeah, seen yeah. that in, in collectibles generally isn't there so it's going to be it stands to reason it'll be the same for jewelry so that's a good yeah. place to start then thinking animals and themed stuff right yeah and it and i think some people get into the notion that it has to be gold or silver to make money or that it has to be a brand you know well you know i'll pick up some i'm, I'm going to share a video later about bracelets i've sold and one of them is just a fish 
-hmm. And there's no brand or maker's mark. It's just this costume jewelry fish bracelet. And and I've had people say, how do you how do you list that? Like if you don't have a maker, some but the thing is somebody that it's looking for a fish bracelet may not say particular brand fish bracelet. They're just looking for a fish, you know? Yeah. So if, if you like the look of it stands to reason someone else is going to that sort of logic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I've, I've watched despite me not being into jewelry and not buying and selling it. I've watched quite a few of your videos where you have the jars and you're fishing out <laughs> endless stuff and it's fascinating. But I've seen you mention tools that you use and testing stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you don't need that to start. But what do you recommend people get if they're going to get seriously into the gold and silver? Because that's what the tools are for mainly, is it? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, when I go out garage sailing or to the thrift stores, I have a magnet. And it's not just like a refrigerator magnet. I'm trying to think of what it's called. I can never remember the name of it. But it's a bit stronger magnet. Right. And the reason I use that is it's the first line of telling if something's going to be gold or silver. So when it, you know, if it's magnetic, it's not going to be pure gold or pure, you know, silver, sterling silver. So there's that, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be gold or silver, but it definitely narrows it down. Right. And then I have a little loop that I use that will help me look at the marks on the inside or, you know, the fasteners and see how it's put together. Yeah. yeah so those so are the two. One of those when you say loop it's like an eyepiece yeah a little single eye yeah <laughs> i don't know that i have it handy either I, I picked one up for for the very reason when i was listing that cross because it had hallmarks and stuff on the back and oh, yeah. let me see if i can grab mine i'll show people what it's like Hold yeah on. definitely those are the two like entry level things to pick up let's see what you got i've, I've used this just for that one item <laughs> Yeah, it's just that. So it's got a magnifier here and then an even stronger one to the side. That's and nice. that was perfect um, just to look at the hallmarks and, and allow me to write in exactly what it was. Actually, when I had that, and this is a, a tip from a complete layman, I had, as I said, I had this gold Celtic cross, tiny little thing, about an inch long, um, that I picked up in a box of junk years ago. And I knew nothing about it. I actually took it to a jewelry store to get it um, appraised as if I was going to sell it to them. Mm -hmm. And he and he then gave me all the information I actually needed, which was it was, I think it was 18 carat and it was made in a certain, I think it was made in England and it was whatever, whatever. So I just wrote all that down, said, yeah, I'll think about it and left. So that was, <laughs> that was my kind of shortcut to learning what I had. Have you ever used a jewelers or anybody to appraise stuff? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a gold man that I've actually taken some pieces to where, you know, the, they, they'll test things or, um, and this, and before I got my, I have a gold and silver testing kit now, but before I did that, you know, I would take it over there. Some of these guys charge, you know, to do that for you. Some of them will, will do it for free, but <clears throat> so I took it over there. There was, a, there was a pair of cufflinks. You may remember this from a couple of years ago. There was a pair of cufflinks that I took over to him, and they ended up selling. I, he, I took the scrap value from him, even though I know he's going to resell them. But they ended up being like $450 I walked out of there with. And wow, I think, yeah, I remember that, yeah. You remember? Well, mm -hmm. I think the reason, too, and, and this is it's different for UK than US, is that our hallmarks are totally different. And I don't think the ladies at the thrift store recognized because it had British hallmarks in it. So I don't think they realized that this lion and this crown and this whatever meant certain things. So definitely if you see any kind of mark, if, if someone takes the time to mark it on the back or on the inside of the ring, you know, take it, take a second, look at it. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I was going to ask you about hallmarks because that just feels like a whole nother language. And as you've just said, even for you, it's confusing. So, so where do you start with that? Or do you even go that route? I mean, what do the hallmarks tell you and what can you learn from them? <laughs> well, yeah, de I mean, definitely if, it, if the piece looks nice and they've taken the time to mark it, pardon me, it's something to, to double check. Um, like I said, the UK hallmarks are actually really well done because there's a, there's been a system in place forever. Right. That's like certain animal or certain crown or certain thing means a place and a, a year and it, you can just like boom 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 you got it all down in the u.s it's different you know it'll just 
be, you know, 95 for silver or certain, like it'll say 18K or 14K or, but then also <laughs> there are numbers. So, so it's, it's something that if, like I say, if, if it's got a mark in it, take, you might take a second look at it to, to see, but then costume jewelry is a whole nother, yeah. there's a whole nother bag of fish. I think from my point of view, the, the, the confusion with the hallmarks and not being quite sure what you've got. And when you come to selling something, not wanting to say something is something that it isn't puts a lot of people off. It certainly does to me because you obviously don't want to sell something in the wrong way. Right. So that's a real barrier to entry. I think when you, when you're talking gold and silver and right. it may sound like a really stupid question, but you just said that silver is marked as nine, two, five. Couldn't any old, so and so put 925 on a piece of metal and say there you go it's silver so you've got to know mm -hmm. it actually is yeah yeah that's what the jeweler told me stamps are cheap you know just heat that little stamp up boop, stamp it yeah so <laughs> so i guess go. you mentioned a testing kit i mean that's that's obviously if you're going to get into this in a big way but you can at home check mm -hmm. that you've actually got silver or gold is that right Yes, yes. So, I, and I've, I've done a couple of videos about showing how I use mine. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just, everything that I think might be as I'm going along, I have a little bin that I keep it in and then I just test a bunch of it at once, unless I get excited. And then I just like have to test it. So, yeah, there's a, there's a way to test it to see. And definitely now <clears throat> I won't list it. Or if it is marked, but it's not, I can say, you know, mark 925, but is magnetic. So, Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I'm coughing again. <laughs> Between the two uh, of us, right? oh, we're terrible, aren't we? Um, <laughs> yeah, and is that a really complicated? Actually, I'll I'll try and dig out that video of Margaret's and put a link below because I'm sure people are going to be interested to see how that works and how you can actually test at home to see what you've got. So mm -hmm. we'll sort that out and we'll get the link to that video. Um, right sorry just referring to my questions um <laughs> you, you touched on t going to a dealer and and selling gold i guess at its scrap value is that something mm -hmm. you do for broken stuff or how, how do you deal with scrap gold yeah like i'll collect i'll collect you know odd earrings or broken pieces but they're, they're gold um, and a lot of times too, I'll have, you know, like here's one of these jars. And a lot of times these jars, you know, when, when you're digging through the jewelry, if you're into that, I, I tell people check the backs because sometimes, or the backs of earrings that is, because sometimes a woman, when she's putting on her earrings, if she's lost the back of one, she'll grab the back off another one and, and stick it on. So if you're just looking for scrap, sometimes, you know, check the back of the earring separate from the actual earring because those backs will sometimes be gold right. yeah i see because it's come from another set that were yeah yeah gold. yeah oh that's a good so, tip. yeah i wouldn't have thought of that so i, I you cool. know i keep those and i have a little bag i just drop them in when i find them and and it all adds up you know one little one is not going to be that much money but you get right. a few of them together and there you so, go so you save up a little box full and then take it once mm -hmm. in a while yeah yeah <laughs> fantastic See, that excites me. I don't know what it is about that. I enjoy watching scrapping videos where the guys go around picking up, you know, washing machines off the side of the road, usually yes. in the US. And it's the same mentality of, of finding bits of scrap gold that really excites me. I don't know why that is. Yeah, or like those metal detector ones. They're like finding oh, rings God, in yeah. the sand. Yeah, oh. See, I'm excited about that as well. It's a, I think um, it's a treasure hunt. The treasure hunter in us, Nick. Yeah. Well, that's why I still do this 15 years later. You know, I'm not looking for gold most of the time, but this stuff is gold to me. You know, computer games is my gold, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think you touched on this, or maybe it wasn't your best find. You mentioned those cufflinks that you got $400 odd for. Was that mm -hmm. your best jewelry find, do you think, so far? That's one of, and that's another thing too, That that's one of the ways I got into selling jewelry was men's accessories like cufflinks, tie tacks, tie bars, collar pins. I don't have a, I don't have one handy, but uh, those were ones that were really easy to start off with because a lot of times at garage sales, people don't even take a second look at them. So I've gotten, you know, those ones at a charity shop or thrift store. And then I got another set of cufflinks and a tie tack at a garage sale that ended up being gold and jade for $4. Because the people were just like selling the stuff off. They didn't take a second look at cufflinks, you know. So that's often a way to, to get in. And these little collar bars, I'll have to get a picture of one to show you. They, you know, I, I've gotten a baggie with 
10 cents for three of them and they sell for 20 bucks a piece for me. So it's yeah. easy money. <laughs> so it's interesting as well that you find the, these little gems in the thrift store. So they clearly don't know everything. They don't know what they've got. So it's worth looking in those cabinets and, and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> see I'm, I'm slowly getting convinced this is a good idea yeah yeah <laughs> so going back to um from a layman what to look for and you said that animals and stuff it is is a good way to go so i mean i actually had a question do themed pieces sell best or do people more go for the gold and silver and the value i mean what would you say i mean when it comes to selling the items do, does a, an interesting themed piece sell quicker than a bog standard gold piece that might be worth a lot more money how do you find it yeah. as with sales yeah i think so i mean i've had some gold pieces up for a while and people you know looking for just a certain like you say a certain themed piece might go it may not fetch as much money but it they they move a little faster so yeah and, and, and I, I mean go on i was going to say do you use etsy more for the interesting obscure bits or not well, I mean, I because I cross post if it's vintage or vintage, I think it's vintage, then it'll go definitely on Etsy. So, but I was looking at some today, and I think I was looking at some bracelets today, and I think I've sold like 50 bracelets on Etsy and maybe 20 on eBay. So, you know, definitely Etsy has a, a yeah. little bit more. Okay, this is fascinating. Now, you held up a, a, that jar earlier, was that a jewelry <laughs> jar? Like, yeah, it was. The famous Margaret <laughs> jewelry jar. So explain because I've never really seen that in the UK. So what is this whole jewelry jar thing? And explain a bit about that. So it's like a grab bag. A lot of places will have them in bags and not in jars, but it's just a jar full. Like if they get over overrun with jewelry, they just start shoving it in the jar. Or if it's jewelry that hasn't sold um, yet in the store and they want fresh things, they'll just shove all the stuff into a jar. And then you can buy the jar. This one was sixteen. You can see sixteen ninety nine, so you get a whole bunch of stuff into a jar, and then hang on, I've got, I've got my fixins here or my dumpings, like you get a whole, you know, bunch of jewelry. This is dumped from a jar that you can go through, and sometimes I'll find silver or turquoise or gold in there that just got overlooked. So. Yeah. So what what's your process with that then? You you'll go through and perhaps pull out the gold first do you have a set process or is it more like i'm excited i'm going to pull out the stuff i really like first how do you approach that because that to me you see going back to what i said earlier that the look of that just freaks me out it's just no i don't want to go there <laughs> um yeah so uh, usually i'll do them on, on videos because it's fun everybody likes to see and then i have i have a few bins that i keep anything that is you know marked silver or gold or things that I think might be that need to be tested. So I have a separate tub for that. And then I've got a tub for other jewelry, like nicer ones that I want to get listed quickly. And then other pieces that if they're broken, you know, I'll, I have a, a spot that I keep pieces that are for bro either broken lots. Cause I'll do a lot, like lot up a bunch of stuff and just sell it off. Um, or yeah, <laughs> like a jewelry D stash. Sometimes I'll just do my own jewelry jar to send off to somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense because you're going to end up with a load of stuff that's almost, you know, that's kind of junky costume. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. I want to ask you because you've mentioned costume jewelry and I've heard mm -hmm. that phrase come up loads. Does that just mean it's not valuable or is there an actual, what, no, I mean, what, what's the, the definition of costume jewelry? What does that actually mean then? I think it's just basically jewelry. That's not fine jewelry. So it's not gold, not silver. Oh, okay. So not gold, not silver. That's kind of the definition, yeah. you think. Oh, but okay. there is definitely costume jewelry that can go in the hundreds of hundreds of dollars, you know, because there are costume jewelry designers that design for Chanel or Lagerfeld or, you know, Neiman Marcus, these high-end department stores where these pieces will go for hundreds of dollars. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So then it's more about just the look of it. It's not made of a fine metal. It's just designed well and desirable because of what it looks like yeah i mean it's just like what makes a pair of guest jeans any different than you know old navy jeans it's just that brand right it's that label yeah and also oh i had an echo then that was weird because we both got these on <laughs> i still got an echo um i was gonna say um 
does vintage add value um just full stop if the older it is the better or does that not translate with jewelry i mean and are there certain times like the 20s for example that we'd be more sought after or the 80s as you mentioned how have you found that with with historical pieces yeah i mean it definitely depends on what's going on in in fashion at the time but right. i mean there are ones that are like the 20s are always going to i mean the art deco jewelry art nouveau jewelry is always going to probably be hot um i think you know but like right now some more like 80s type styles might be selling better than other things because that's kind of in, yeah. in vogue right now i think yeah decades come and go don't they at the moment yeah. people are starting to talk a lot about the 90s bizarrely which oh, makes gosh. me feel old because that feels like yesterday but yeah certainly the 80s are re really trendy right now totally the yeah, music's yeah. all come back so, yeah. mod stuff i do really well with mod type jewelry you know like 60s that like you would see like big circles and bright colors okay yeah and what about the 70s plastic because in the <laughs> 70s it was all plastic jewelry wasn't it bright colors and big plastic stuff is that yeah 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 i mean it just yeah it just depends like on the style and the yeah so, so i suppose Let's talk about listing it then. What 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 would you say for somebody who thinks I'm really going to have a go at this? Things to remember when you're listing it. I guess the photographs are going to be key because it's all about what it looks like. Yeah, that and then getting as many good keywords in there as you can. Like if it is a decade type piece, getting in like what decade it goes with. If it's mod or if it's, I'm trying to think of another. <laughs> like I had some checkerboard earrings. I made sure I put ska in there. You know that kind of knowing those that terminology. Right. And if you don't know, then what you do is you just go to Google and you describe your earrings or you describe the piece, you know, black and white, check earrings and see what comes up. And, and just like I would open up a bunch of tabs with things that look kind of similar mm -hmm. and just kind of like cherry pick keywords that match what I've got. So that's, that's a I cool do. idea. I do a similar thing um, on eBay. When I come to list, I'll do a search and see what other people have used to describe yeah. the same item. And, yeah. I, and I see keywords and just pinch them. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, especially yeah. on solds, because then you know that worked. <laughs> you know? Totally. Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah, refine it by what's sold. And then some for the same item you'll see go for more. And I think, okay, why? And you'll see a couple of keywords or they're in a different category. So, yeah, totally use. I use eBay for so much research yeah. wise. And it's the best tool, I think. Just find out what works by just looking at what other people did yeah absolutely <laughs> um okay i'm running out of questions oh. I, I was gonna say if then somebody did start with jewelry where would you say to start perhaps not go for the gold and silver because you're gonna pay well i don't know do most people if they have gold and silver know that they've got that and charge more or do some people sometimes. just not have a clue what they've got yeah sometimes sometimes they don't know sometimes they don't care Sometimes they do know and it's expensive. Like I, I went to one garage sale and this lady had three sterling silver charms and she was like, give me 10 cents for all of them. And I, I couldn't, I was, it was early on and I was just like, are you sure? And I told her, I was like, they're silver. Are you sure? She's like, just give me 10 cents. I was like, okay. You know? Ten yeah. So that's like 10 P in our world. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was like, all right, 10 cents. Here you go. Sometimes they don't care. Sometimes, I mean, I've been to a garage sale where a lady, she got a dolly. She had one of these like stand up jewelry armoires. And we'd asked about, well, do you have any jewelry? Well, she got her dolly out and dollied out her whole jewelry armoire. And we just got to dig through it. She didn't care. You know, so we're picking out pieces of gold jewelry. This, is, this other lady was there. Like, we're just going through her jewelry, picking out. She's just like, I'll make a, show me what you got. And then I'll, you know, 10 bucks go, you know. I'll like, just sell me the whole armoire. Just give me the dolly. Stick it in the back of my car. <laughs> so is jewellery the thing that you enjoy sourcing the most? Do you think do you get most excited about jewellery or are there other niches that you enjoy more? Yeah, no, the, it's definitely the one I enjoy more. It does make it, because I'm kind of paring down on what I'm buying, it makes going out like garage sailing really hit or miss because I'm trying not to pick as much big stuff up. Mm-hmm because I don't have the time with merch and everything to do both, at least jewelry is small and I can get a, you know, pretty good profit off of it. So 
you know, I went out this past week and I think I picked up five things, you know. I suppose that is a, a big bonus to getting into jewellery because you could have, I mean, I've got these little cabinets here with little drawers in that I do, I mm -hmm. use for Lego. But I mean, you could have a hundred jewellery pieces in there and you could have a thousand pounds worth of gear sat there taking up the space of one board game. Yeah, for example. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I know a, a lady, she has a channel called the Dorky Thrifters and she lives in an RV yeah. and she, you know, glasses, jewelry, because it's small, it fits in the RV and she's good to go. Exactly. Yeah, that is a good selling point for buying and selling jewelry. Because <laughs> like you yeah. say, one pair of cufflinks could be 400 pounds. There you go. Yeah, like here's a mug. Uh, I could probably fit 20 pieces of jewelry in there, you know, so if they're small enough. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and I guess they're they're easy to ship as well. You won't. Mm -hmm. I don't know what what issues have you found with shipping jewelry? Any at all? Not really. I mean, everybody's been pretty happy. I I try to make it look nice. You know, I use the six by four by four box for most pieces. I just get little inexpensive. I have them right here. Little velvet pouches, like that. Some people oh, get the boxes. I I use these just little velvet pouches. That's about it. So do you buy those in bulk on on eBay or something? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. I get that size and then a little bit bigger size if it, in case the piece is a bit bigger. Fantastic. And have you seen much repeat customer as well? Because I, I guess jewelry buyers are quite often collectors and they might come back to you again. Um, not that I, well, I've had somebody buy multiple pieces at once. Yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of cool. But like I say, some of my things are like one off, like one fish bracelet and one, I don't know, you know, it's just one off yeah. type things. So. Cool. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm out of questions. Unless you can think of <laughs> things that would help a layman like me off the top of your head thinking about getting into jewelry. Well, I would say, I mean, one of the things that I do, because like you say, it's so small, it doesn't take up any space hardly. Don't be afraid to put a high price on, on the pieces because if, you're, if you have the ability to wait for the right buyer, then it's definitely worth it. I, I have a bracelet that sold for $75 and I saw eBay sold for. 30 35 but i was like mine looks way cooler i think i'm gonna go for you know a higher price yeah and i waited a little while but it finally sold for the price i wanted and do you sell all your jewelry by setting the price on buy it now and waiting or have you experimented with auction at all no i i, I don't really like auctions <laughs> no. I, i've tried some because i did some lots and i put them on auction i think i sold one of the lots and it was for the asking price it you know the the beginning price so it didn't really yeah i do guess with with the higher value gold piece pieces and stuff that have a certain intrinsic value you would think on auction they, they would at least get to a certain level but then you're still running that risk of underselling that's the fear i always have with auction mm -hmm. is is that paranoia yeah, yeah yeah i mean and that's the thing too with gold and silver is that if you put it on auction somebody might just be wanting to pay the scrap value for it and not the coolness value. If it's just like gold fish, I keep using fish, I don't know why. You know, <laughs> gold fish necklace, you know, and it's 30 grams, then maybe the person's like, I only wanna pay the 30, how much it's worth at 30 grams in scrap value. Whereas if you're selling it, say on Etsy, somebody may be willing to pay way more because it looks awesome and it's gold. So, yeah. I've just set it at the scrap value. Yeah, I guess, have you ever, had to scrap something because it's broken and it feels bad because you can see the amount of work that's gone into it or anything like that. Have you ever had second thoughts about scrapping stuff? Well, like those cufflinks, I, I don't think, I don't think the guy was going to scrap them. I think because he also sold jewelry, so he was probably going to sell them as well, but they were so well done. I mean, they were just amazing, but I did feel kind of bad. Like I almost wanted to keep them because they were the worksman workmanship that went into them. You could see clearly was just fantastic. Yeah. So you, so he paid you that the, the actual scrap value was four hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So they wow. could have sold for more than that if I was wanting. It was like bird in the hand, <laughs> or wait and maybe have to deal with a unhappy buyer and returns and blah blah yeah. blah. I was like mm, four fifty, please. <laughs> and and just just for the viewers watching, let us know how much you paid for those. I paid a dollar. That's amazing. I you don't get many of those. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, nope. it's like one, right? Like once a year, once a, every couple of years, you get one of those. Yeah. Like amazing. 
Yeah, we all get those wow moments every now and then. <laughs> Mine was the Atari car. I'm not. I'm never going to top that one. Oh no, that was amazing. <laughs> I was telling I was telling the guy we have a local little vintage you know game shop here where mm. they specialize in Ataris and Coleco's and all these old game systems and I was telling him about that and I think he just didn't believe me. <laughs> no way! You should have said, "Search Nick Hills on YouTube, you'll find it." <laughs> yeah, because it was right then, like right when it was happening, we were in there like getting a game from the boys, and I was yeah, I don't think he believed me. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, I think we've we've thoroughly discussed jewelry for beginners. I hope yeah. some somewhere in there. I know I've learned a few things, so so that's something. So hopefully, people watching this will learn a, few, a bit more. And if you if you are intrigued about buying and selling jewelry, Margaret's channel is the place to go. There's loads of videos on there, like you say about unbox unjarring the jars, <laughs> and you talk yeah. about how to test the jewelry. I'll link that video specifically anyway. If you want to go over there and check out how you go about testing for gold and silver. But yeah. yeah, I'll drop the and link to Margaret's you... channel. Sorry, go, go on. on. No, you go. No, I didn't interrupt you. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I'll drop the link to your channel. So, so yeah, go over there and search for the jewelry vids. Have you got like playlists of jewelry videos or, or just? Yeah, I do. I probably need to make them cleaner because I've been doing more like, how do you tell the difference between, like I was, last month I did all black jewelry stuff. Like, how do you know if it's onyx or jet? How do you know if it's? you know, plastic or amber, how do you know, you know, so more tutorial type telling the, this, this month was bone and ivory and I did post this bone and ivory video and I got some, so, you know, and I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying you need to know if you're going to pick up jewelry, if it's ivory, you know, the laws and stuff. Oh, I got some comments I had to delete from people that are oh, anti-ivory, right. you know, and I'm like, <laughs> and I, I, I put in the, I was like, I'm not saying I condone it. I'm just saying it's important to know if you're picking it up. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Well, it is because <laughs> let's say you're, you're so anti it, you wouldn't even want to buy it and resell it. You still need to know when you've got it in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this a piece of, because celluloid often mimics it. Sorry, we got off on a tangent. But celluloid, off, which is a plastic, often mimics ivory. Yeah. And it's like you need to know, like, am I holding a piece of plastic or is this ivory? How do I tell? Right? I did see that video where you, where you had a little clever little drop down menu and you had to try and guess which one was the ivory and the bone. And I think I got every one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying it now. I was like, oh, let's do a quiz, interactive yeah. quiz. <laughs> but those yeah. videos you've done have been great about, you know, the amber and, and all of these different materials and how to how to find out whether they are what you think they are or not, because that's yeah. the sort of stuff that, you know, it can be the difference between having a, a piece of jewelry that you think is junk or mm -hmm. something that once you've identified it, you can sell it as an amber necklace or whatever and get yeah. perhaps, you know, hundreds of pounds. I, I know our friend Tom sold an amber bead necklace for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Oh, yeah. And the thing and with amber is like, it feels like plastic. It does. It's just like, it's lightweight. It feels like plastic. And if you don't know you're holding amber, it could be $12 or $100. Exactly. So yeah, if you're thinking of getting into this, I'll say it again, <laughs> check out Margaret's channel. There's loads and loads of info over there. Anyway, let's wrap this one up. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope there's been some useful information we've cobbled together for the viewers out there. So I really appreciate that, Margaret. Thanks for having me. I'm so proud we stayed on, on track so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think it helps that we're, we're not doing it live live because there's no side chat. With a side chat, oh, yeah. we're just useless. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have thrown us, of course, hours ago. Hours ago? We've not even been on for an hour. You know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so if you enjoyed that, please give it a thumbs up. Check out the links below to Margaret's channel and those videos, and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.